Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another Mythic Mobs tutorial. You are watching the Essentials, Tips and Tricks of Mob Making, Part 2. And I am very excited for you guys to be here. Now this one's going to be a little bit lengthier than the first one because I have a lot more to cover in this one than I do the first one. The first one was just uh, general rules for mob creation for the sake of, well, mobs. So, um, what we're going to do in this one, we're going to be covering some more mob options as well as some skills that directly correlate to them, and some tips and tricks on how to deal with uh, skills. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started because, um, well, that's what we're here for. If you haven't watched the first part of it and you don't know what you're doing entirely, I highly recommend going back and watching that link in the description. Um, okay, let's get started for real now. So, where I left off, we were talking about these. As you can tell, as I last mentioned, this was just leisure. So, let's talk about your config file first. Here, as you can see, I have it split off into three different sections. Active skill, passive skills, and maintenance. I highly, highly, highly recommend leaving all your skills and maintenance until you know they are ready for use. The reason I say this is because, well, this is where you actually go to test them. So, what I'm going to do... I want to start off with my first skill here, Tutorial Damage. What it is, it fires its skill, a meta skill, which you're going to have to go over into the skill file for to create. Um, it uses it by making itself use the skill on a timer of one second. So let's go ahead and get started. Go ahead and reload. I don't know why I did as if mobs can reload there. MMM spawn tutorial mod. Ouch. So, what I got going on here, it's hurting me every second when I'm within a certain radius of it. This can be kind of helpful, say, if you have a mob that has some sort of deadly aura around it and you just want players to kind of keep a distance while fighting it. However, with a mob like this that's strictly melee, that is very, very, um... Well, it's, it's not helpful. There is a better word for it, but I am a bit brain dead this morning. So what we're going to do, the best way to test a skill, rather than having it use it on a timer, use it on interact. Now what does that mean? Well, when it's on timer, it's going to keep reactivating itself for as however long you set this for. That probably didn't come out right. It's going to use this every single second or however long you set this duration for. Say I set it for 40, that's 2 seconds, 60, 3 seconds, so on and so forth. It's going to keep repeating itself in that many intervals. So I think interact is the best way to go about it for some skills. However, there are some that should not be this way, but that's at your discretion. Now let's go ahead and reload it and see what happens. As you can see, I can get close to it now and not take damage. This is very helpful because now I actually have a little bit more control of the field I'm walking on. So now when I right click him, I take damage. This is because he is activating his skill whenever I interact with him. Now, what I want to show you here is, we have a radius based targeter. Now. This means it's going to be area of effect, and it's not going to target just the individual that it's targeting. It probably doesn't make a lot of sense. I highly recommend looking into the manual and looking at targeters for better descriptions, but this just means players in radius, radius equals five. Well, how do I know how big five is? I have a simple solution for that. What I'm going to do in maintenance I'm going to add a effect. So we're going to do effect particles particle equals. I like doing red dust personally. It's very um, very straightforward and very easy to see. I actually changed my mind about this part. I'm going to change it to particle ring. So particle equals red dust amount equals. Um, we'll do three. Three is usually a good number for this type of thing. Points. 
equals 32. And we said the radius was 5. So I want to see how big 5 is. So what you want to do is set it at self on timer. Um, for this type of thing, I generally think on timer of 10, which is half a second, is fine, because all this is is just kind of a marker. So let's go ahead and turn this part of the skill back off, and let's turn on the on timer skill again. So if I go ahead and reload it here, this is the radius within which it is hurting players. So if I cross this red line, boom, I just took damage. Cross the line. Very, very helpful for area of effect. Now there are some skills that you might create where this might not be applicable. Sometimes it's just trial and error, but for stuff based on just pure damage like this within a radius, I like doing little effect rings so that way you can see just how far the mob is going to hit. So what you're gonna do, generally what I like to do whenever you're done with this, go ahead and disable the skill but leave it there, don't delete it, just add a little hashtag in front of it to disable it. Now, if you haven't seen my random skill tutorial, I highly recommend watching that, that will also be in the description below. But whenever your skill is finalized and you think it's good to go, go ahead and copy your skill here and put it into a random skill thing here. So skills, tutorial damage. So now, with all of these disabled because they have hashtags in front of them, let's go ahead and enable this one. What it's going to do is it's going to pick a skill from a list, whatever you have typed in uh, in this area, and it's going to use it every 10 seconds, because that's what 200 is, is 10 seconds. It's in multiples of 20, if that helps. So, let me go ahead and save, reload, heal, and, and as you can see, the skill is working just as we intended. It's just using it on a different basis now, because we threw it into a different skill file, technically. But it's working. So now, I want to go ahead and talk to you guys about the use of AI. There are so many different AIs that you could use. I'm not going to cover them in this tutorial, however, I want to show you the correlation between movement speed and no AI. So, what I did here, I have a skill right here, my third skill, um, which is a projectile. Now this is, uh, I'm not going to cover that either because this is actually a very complicated mechanic, or not very complicated, but it is overwhelming for beginners. So I will not be covering it in this tutorial, but I promise I will in a future one. But for the sake of right now, I'm going to show you. It fires a projectile, and as you can see it has it set to at self, which means it's going to run the skill on itself. But within the skill file, it's going to use its target. Well, how does it have a target? Well, I'm going to show you. See how it's looking at me right now as if it wants to chase me? It can't, obviously, because its movement speed is set to 0.01, .01, but it is still targeting... Uh, excuse me. It is still targeting me. So what we're going to do... I'm going to go ahead and kill him so I can show you guys the significance here. Kill. Reload. Now what did I do? I set no AI equals, or not equals, but no AI to true. So if I go ahead and reload and spawn him back in, well he's no longer looking at me. This is this can be good and it can be bad. If you have skills like this, like the projectile, that have specific targets, having no AI is going to cause it to not work. However, if you have skills like this, where it attacks player, all players in a radius, then having no AI set to true will be fine. It does not need a targeter to target um, players in a radius, or any other targeter that are generally multi-location. So with that being said, well, nothing's happening. He has no AI, I hit him, he's not going anywhere. Again, very useful for area of effect skills for the sake of testing, however this is not what we want. So I'm going to go ahead and set that to false and reload. Now it's not going to change right away because that's the mob we spawned in. 
so we're gonna have to spawn him in again here. But as you can see, now he's looking at me and following me. And sooner than later, there's a projectile skill that I coded in for him to use as well. Since he has a target now, because his AI is turned back on, he will now use his skill on me because in his skill file it is defined to target, well, the target. Now one thing I wanted to say, um, do not, I personally recommend not removing any of your skills from maintenance file here. I'm just going to go ahead and disable that real quick. Okay. So don't remove any of your skills from your maintenance file, unless, of course, you know, you are absolutely... What in the world? Again, I highly recommend leaving them on interact. I, all I did there was just delete the one that was on a timer, because it was not useful for me. Now, let's talk about the passive skills. This could be literally anything. Say you want the mob to, like, heal itself. Um, amount equals 2 on on timer 20. So it heals itself for 2 health every second. Um, so you also wanted to like message players, you know? So um, message you know m equals mwahaha I am alive at players and radius r equals 20 I cannot type still r equals 20 um, on timer 100. You know, that's that's all this passive skill is, is literally anything like that. And of course, you know, say you want to have him have a specific animation for like when he dies, you can even add that here too. So, you know, effect, uh, we'll just make up a quick one, effect particles, particle equals smoke. So we added our little thing here, you know, I mean, here he's just, uh, Incorrectly con- oh, I apologies, I totally forgot to add an equal sign. Okay, so, now he's gonna be, mwahaha, I am alive. You know, just constantly, every 10 seconds, because that's what I set him up to do. Sorry, every 5 seconds. Every 5 seconds, because that's what I set him up to do, and he's got himself a little on-death particle effect here, so let's go and just chop him to pieces. And there's his little smoke burst. Uh, the white one is just default Minecraft, but all that black particle was just his on death skill. So, literally, active skill is just basically your random skill activating whatever skills you put in there. Passive skills, well, anything passive, so like healing, messages, death skills, whatever. Uh, you know, I highly recommend putting all of those in the passive section. Uh, and then maintenance, whatever thing you want to work on, adjust and go back to, you can disable everything else and just go ahead and go into that. <sighs> I hope this tutorial has helped you guys out a lot. I Again, I realize this is a bit lengthy, but there was a lot to be covered, and I hope that it all made sense to you. If not, feel free to ask me questions in the comments section below or on Discord, I will have that in the description. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope this inspired you or helped you out in any way. If it did, please leave a like and subscribe. Ladies and gentlemen, your creations are going to go far, and we're going to get there together. Thank you so much for watching, and I can't wait to see what you come up with in the future.